हेलो एंड वेलकम टू येट अनदर मॉड्यूल ऑन फिजिकल एजुकेशन एंड टुडे वी विल बी डिस्कसिंग अबाउट द ऑडियो विजुअल एड्स इन फिजिकल एजुकेशन ट्रेनिंग द फिजिकल एजुकेशन ट्रेनिंग इज अ ट्रेडिशनल प्रोसेस बट द इनपुट गिवन बाय द डिजिटल एंड द मल्टीमीडिया टूल्स कैन सर्टनली प्ले अ वेरी पॉजिटिव रोल इन द प्रोसेस ऑफ इम्पार्टिंग फिजिकल एजुकेशन ट्रेनिंग लेट्स हैव अ लुक audio visual education or multimedia based education that is mbe is instruction where particular attention is paid to the audio and visual presentation of the material with the goals of improving comprehension and retention after the use of training films and other visual aids during world war 2 audio visual technology gradually developed in sophistication and its use became more widespread in educational establishments such as schools colleges universities museums and galleries as well as tourist destinations such as the purpose built circular cinema aromanches at aromanches les pains which shows a 360 degree film presentation of the normandy landings children learn best by observing and copying the behaviors of adults it is therefore evident that learning is more effective when sensory experiences are stimulated these include pictures slides videos videos and other audio visual tools according to the webster dictionary audio visual aids is defined as training or educational materials directed at both the sense of hearing and sense of sight films recordings photograph etc used in classroom instructions library collections or the likes the concept of audio visual aids is not new and can be traced back to 17th century when john amos comnius 1592 to 1670 a bohemian educator introduced pictures as teaching aids in his book orbis sensualium pictus picture of the sensual world that was illustrated with 150 drawings of everyday life similarly jean rossio and j h pestalozzi advocated the use of visual and play materials in teaching more recently audio visual aids were also widely used during and after world war 2 by the armed service the successful use of picture and other visual aids in us armed forces during world war 2 proved the effectiveness of instructional tools there are various types of audio visual materials ranging from film strips microfilms slides projected opaque materials tape recordings and flash cards in the current digital world audio visual aids have grown exponentially with several multimedia such as educational dvds powerpoint television educational series youtube and other online materials The goal of audio visual aids is to enhance teachers ability to present the lesson in simple effective and easy to understand for the students. Audio visual material make learning more permanent since students use more than one sense. It is important to create awareness for the state and federal ministry of education as policy makers in secondary schools of the need to inculcate audiovisual resource as main teaching pedagogy in curricula the outcome is to promote the audiovisual material in secondary schools because they lack the resource to produce them the visual instruction makes abstract idea more concrete to the learners this is to provide a basis for the schools to understand the important roles in encouraging and supporting the use of audiovisual resource in addition studies have shown 
that there is significant difference between the use and non-use of audiovisual material in teaching and learning. Now the objectives. To strengthen teachers' skill in making teaching learning process more effective, to attract and retain learners' attention, to generate interest across different levels of students, to develop lesson plans that are simple and easy to follow, to make class more interactive and interesting, to focus on student-centered approach. Now the advantages. In this modern world, we use digital tools to improve the teaching learning process. The most common tool we use in classroom these days is PowerPoint slides, which makes the class more interesting, dynamic and effective. Moreover, it also helps to introduce new topics in easy way. The use of audiovisual aids makes the student to remember the concept for longer period of time. They convey the same meaning as words, but it gives clear concepts, thus help to bring effectiveness in learning. Integrating technology into the classroom helps students to experience things virtually or vicariously. For example, if the teacher wants to give a lesson on Taj Mahal, it is possible that not all the students in India have visited the place, but you can show it through a video, thereby allowing the students to see the monument with their own eyes. Although the first-hand experience is the best way of educative experience, but such an experience cannot always be done in a practical manner, so in some case, we need to have substitution. Use of audiovisual aids help in maintaining discipline in the class since all the students' attention are focused in learning. This interactive session also develops critical thinking and reasoning that are important components of the teaching learning process. Audiovisual provides opportunities for the effective communication between teacher and students in learning. For example, in a study on English as foreign language classroom, the difficulties faced by EFL learner are lack of motivation, lack of exposure to the target language and lack of pronunciation by teacher. And such difficulties can be overcome by audio as purpose of communication and visual as more exposure. Students learn when they are motivated and curious about something. Traditional verbal instructions can be boring and painful for the students. However, use of audiovisual provides intrinsic motivation to students by piquing their curiosity and stimulating their interests in the subjects. Now the disadvantages. One should have an idea that too much audiovisual material used at one time can result in boredom. It is useful only if it is implemented effectively. Considering that each teaching learning situation varies, so it is important to know that all concepts may not be learned effectively through audiovisual. Most of the time the equipment like projector, speakers and headphone are a bit costly and hence some of the school cannot afford it. It needs a lot of time for the teacher to prepare lesson to have interactive classroom session. Also, teacher's valuable time may be lost in gaining familiarity with the new equipment. Some students may feel reluctant to ask question while film is playing and in small rooms can be a physical barrier. In country like India, where electricity is not available in rural areas, it is not feasible to use audiovisual aids that require electricity. The current popular understanding of the term diorama denotes a partially three-dimensional full-size replica or scale model of a landscape typically showing historical events, nature scenes or cityscapes for purposes of education or 
entertainment. One of the first uses of dioramas in a museum was in Stockholm, Sweden, where the Biological Museum opened in 1893. It had several dioramas over three floors. They were also implemented by the National Museum Grigor Antipa from Bucharest, Romania and constituted a source of inspiration for many important museums in the world, such as the Museum of Natural History of New York and the Great Oceanographic Museum in Berlin. Modern museum dioramas may be seen in the most major natural history museums. Typically, these displays used a tilted plane to represent what would otherwise be a level surface, incorporate a painted background of distant objects and often employ false perspective, carefully modifying the scale of objects placed on the plane to reinforce the illusion through depth perception in which objects of identical real-world size placed farther from the observer appear smaller than those closer. Now, Digital Light Processing DLP, is a display device based on optical micro-electromechanical technology that uses a digital micro-mirror device. It was originally developed in 1987 by Dr. Larry Hornbeck of Texas Instruments. While the DLP imaging device was invented by Texas Instruments, the first DLP-based projector was introduced by Digital Projections Limited in 1997. Digital Projection and Texas Instruments were both awarded Emmy Awards in 1998 for the DLP projector technology. DLP is, is used in a variety of display applications from traditional static displays to interactive displays and also non-traditional embedded applications including medical security and industrial uses. DLP technology is used in DLP front projectors standalone projection units for classroom and business primarily, DLP rear projection television sets and digital signs. It is also used in about 85% of digital cinema projection and in additive manufacturing as a power source in some printers to cure resins into solid 3D objects. Smaller Pico chipsets are used in mobile devices including cell phone accessories and projection display functions embedded directly into phones. A slide projector is an optomechanical device for showing photographic slides. 35mm slide projectors, direct descendants of the large format Magic Lantern, first came into widespread use during the 1950s as a form of occasional home entertainment. Family members and friends would gather to view slide shows, which typically consisted of slides snapped during vacations and at family events. Slide projectors were also widely used in educational and other institutional settings. Photographic film slides and projectors have mostly been replaced by image files on digital storage media shown on a projection screen by using a video projector or simply displayed on a large screen video monitor. An overhead projector works on the same principle as a 35mm slide projector in which a focusing lens projects light from an illuminated slide onto a projection screen where a real image is formed. However, some differences are necessitated by the much larger size of the transparencies used, generally the size of a printed page, and the requirement that the transparency be placed face-up and readable to the presenter. For the latter purpose, the projector includes a mirror just before or after the focusing lens to fold the optical system towards the horizontal. 
that mirror also accomplishes a reversal of the image in order that the image projected onto the screen corresponds to that of the slide as seen by the presenter looking down at it rather than a mirage image thereof. Therefore, the transparency is placed face up towards the mirror and focusing lens in contrast with a 35 mm slide projector or film projector which lack such a mirror where the slide's image is non-reversed on the side opposite the focusing lens. Now the functions of audiovisual teaching aids facilitate and develop a community of learners through online icebreaker activities. These activities offer fun and easy ways to get to know each other while also providing outlets for student creativity. A neat tool that works well for this is VoiceThread. Students can use a computer webcam to record a video of themselves and view other students' video all on one page. Help students visualize difficult concepts or procedures more easily by using static or dynamic multimedia. Very simple and efficient softwares like Screen Steps which allows you to quickly create visual handouts for learners. Teachers and students can use softwares like Jing to record a screenshot or video which produces a video tutorial or information about a website, embedding the video on their website or sending it to the student as an email attachment. These types of software provide a great way for teachers to make the most out of their multimedia and online resources. Scaffold learning through activities enhanced by videos and online games. When assigning reading about an obscure historical event, you might want to create pre-reading activities by having students watch and comment on videos that fill in needed background knowledge. Searching for videos about events can provide needed support and add to a student's gap in knowledge. Then you can embed these videos on your class website, blog or wiki or have students add to a playlist as they locate more videos on the topic. Make language and culture come alive through the viewing and creation of audio and video instruction. Students could view videos and television programs available online and stay up to date on current events in that country. They could also create their own videos and share them with another class. Comparing cultural norms and addressing other questions through a group blog or wiki. Provide a menu of authentic assignment options for students to complete, allowing them to explore and identify their passions and talents. Encourage them to create and publish an original digital story. Have them produce a weekly podcast show for the classroom highlighting events of the week using blogs. They might also want to film their developing skills in a sport or record their progress in learning a musical instrument. Enhance accessibility through the use of powerful multimedia software tools. Encourage students to use a speech-to-text tool to write their next essay or short story. This is especially helpful for students who have fine motor challenges or students who have trouble with keyboarding. Use auto captioning features to create accessible multimedia for students with hearing challenges. Enable visualization of concepts and their connections through collaborative construction and discussion of concept maps. One of my all-time favorites is CMAP Tools, a free multi-platform software tool that can be downloaded to your computer. Students could work in groups, constructing a concept map and even recording with CMAP Tools this construction. Encourage collaboration and feedback by integrating assignments with tools that support conversations and comments. 
For instance, have students post their slideshows and have them view their classmates' presentations and post comments. Or have students create video comments on video sharing sites such as TeacherTube. Use collaborative software such as blogs and wikis for students to easily create, edit and publish their work. And make sure you provide information for parents to access these social media sites to see what their children are doing. Make learning situated and personal with easy to access information from you and the rest of the world. Have students subscribe to your class Twitter and blog feeds and enable them on their mobile devices if possible. Or have them use a Twitter aggregator such as TweetDeck to stay on top of news announcements. Show them how to subscribe to dynamic sites using RSS readers and how to read and track updated content. Have them subscribe to podcasts and rate those podcasts. Allow students to contact you using SMS or other multimedia tools. Help students document and present their learning through authentic assessments. Instead of taking an end of term test, have students collect their work and detail their progress on their learning log using any number of free blogging tools. Show them how to tag their posts, how to create categories, which could be the course objectives or standards, how to link to artifacts, how to write reflections and then set aside time at the end of each week for reflection and documentation of their work. At the end of the term or semester, students could then refine their learning log, turning it into a showcase portfolio, presenting it to the class and parents, discussing their work what they learn and where they want to go from there. Not only would this individualize their learning experience, but it would make students more responsible for their work and enable them to experience learning as being lifelong and active. Audiovisual education or multimedia based education, that is MBE, is instruction where particular attention is paid to the audio and visual presentation of the material with the goals of improving comprehension and retention. Children learn best by observing and copying the behaviors of adults. It is therefore evident that learning is more effective when sensory experiences are stimulated. These include pictures, slides, videos, videos and other audiovisual tools. According to the Webster Dictionary, audiovisual aids is defined as training or educational materials directed at both the sense of hearing and sense of sight. Films, recordings, photograph, etc. used in classroom instructions, library collections or the likes. So in this episode, we have discussed a lot about different types of audiovisual aids which can be used for imparting physical education training and which can add a lot of cutting edge to the training and the education process. I hope the information provided was of some use to all of you. Thank you so much for watching.